Hello, it's Edmund Mike Zero, Mike November Golf here with another one of my first impressions, unscripted, overly long, rambling reviews. And today I'm doing a video on a new product, the Whisper Light uh, device from Soda Beams. And I should say from the outset that I have bought this of my own free will with my own money. Uh, I have no connection with Soda Breams or uh, Richard Golf 3 Charlie Whiskey India, uh, who's the, the head honcho there, as I understand it, uh, other than in the capacity as a customer. I've paid for this with my own money and I will neither gain nor lose anything by praising this or criticising it. Um, if praise or criticism is due. That's the first thing that I should mention. The second thing is that this is one of the first ones made. It's from the original production run. I'm filming this video in December 2016. It's the only one I've ever owned or seen or used in the flesh. So whilst I have no particular reason to assume that this one isn't representative of all of them, um, your my mileage may vary as the saying goes. So the first thing to say about it was it arrived uh, pretty quickly, it was well packaged. I have, um, I don't need the jiffy bag anymore, but we have some nice uh, soda beans uh, pink bubble wrap. It comes with what seems like minimal instructions that refer you to the dxblora.net website and that allowed me to get this up and running very very quickly without any problems at all. I'm uh, not a beginner with computers but I'm not highly highly computer literate. That website explains step by step exactly what you need to do to get this thing on the air and it also explains uh, some of the things that can um, be issues if you have problems with getting it uh, up and running. So that basically tells you everything that you need to know. Um, there is a Facebook group now as well, although I think that's been set up by one of the users rather than Soda Beams themselves, but uh, even so it's uh, certainly a very useful resource. Um, they also very kindly sent me a packet of Jelly Babies which I'm saving till Christmas. So here is the Whisper Light. On this side there is um, a miniature USB socket. It doesn't come provided as standard with the USB cable. That socket is used for powering the thing and uh, programming it. On the opposite side there is a female SMA connector. So if your coax happens to have a bit of PL259 on the end of it, you need a male SMA to SO239 socket. Soda beams sell those and they also sell uh, a cable that you can use. This particular one here came with uh, the power bank that you'll see in a minute and it's only good for passing current uh, it won't pass data so if you plug one of these into your computer and your computer will then not talk to your whisper light then maybe try using a different cable this is really really light I managed to balance this on my little finger and I'll try and do it now without dropping the thing no, it's hard to do, but it's so light and it slips into your pocket very easily. You could be forgiven for thinking that there's uh, nothing but air in there. And the other thing that possibly doesn't come across on websites is how small this thing is. I should have measured it beforehand really, wouldn't I? Shouldn't I? Um, five centimetres across and if we got about the same that way and maybe one centimetre deep, weighs virtually nothing and uh, really solidly well built. Um, running full tilt at 200 watts you can select the power, you, uh, sorry 200 watts, 200 milliwatts, um, you can select the power from 5 milliwatts upwards, even going full pelt at 200 watts it doesn't get hot, it just gets slightly warm on the bottom. It seems very well made and it comes with uh, filters for 20 and 30 metres but if you stick a low pass filter after it, uh, if you have one of those lying around, it can be used anywhere from top band up to 20 metres. Remember though this is version 1 so if you're watching this video a long time in the future there might be upgraded um, versions that have come out in the meantime.
This is the power bank that I've used to power the whisper light the whole time I've owned it. I've never used any other power source. There is a review of this power bank on uh, Julian Eilert's YouTube channel. I recommend all of his videos anyway. And this one is intelligent so it will turn itself off when faced with very low current draw. Unless you disable it by flicking the switch that you might be able to see on the side. And um, it was more or less fully charged. The batteries in it came from a laptop, so they were slightly degraded. They weren't brand new, but they weren't one of these cheap, um, fake Chinese jobbies either. And um, they lasted six and a half days, powering the whisper light 24 hours a day, running at 100 milliamps on the 20 meter band. Over here we have a power bank that came from Pound World with a pound coin for comparison size wise. The packaging claimed it had a capacity of 1500 milliamp hours. Uh, Big Clive did a teardown video of one of these on the Ashens YouTube channel, both of which come highly recommended. The battery in there is likely to be a little to have a capacity of a little under uh, 1000 milliamp hours but it's light and it's very portable so if you were going on a de-expedition up a hill somewhere where every gram counted then as long as you weren't running the whisper light continuously for days um, at 200 milliamps then something like that as a very temporary power option would probably be okay um, if you're running the whisper light at home, be careful of the mains USB adapter that you use because some of them can introduce noise onto the signal. Uh, use a receiver to make sure that the signal sounds pure and hasn't got hum on it and all that sort of thing. And that is enough to stop the whisper light working. So be careful if you're running it uh, from the mains via a um, USB adapter. So the whisper light is uh, transmitting and it's drawing 110 milliamps if you believe the uh, the charger doctor here. This is a cheap one from China so I don't know if I really genuinely believe it over much. And uh, when the whisper light stops transmitting the current will drop significantly. At the moment you can tell it's transmitting fairly obviously because the red light is on. In about 10 seconds or so it will have completed its whisper transmission and it will go back to, uh, well not receive because there isn't a receiver in it. So the light will go out any second now. Any second now. There we are. Here's my radio controlled clock. And you will see that it will flash green. And so now it will wait a while. And the current draw has now gone down to 20 milliamps, which is so little that some USB chargers will think no current is being drawn at all and will shut themselves off. So that's a potential pitfall to be aware of if you are using a power bank. One of the things you will need to do when you apply power to the whisper light is to press um, the button on it exactly at the top of an even minute because uh, whisper is very demanding in terms of transmitting at exactly the right time within the minute. In front of me is what these days is referred to as a radio controlled clock. Um, in the early to mid 90s I knew them as atomic clocks uh, I was involved with hospital radio for about two decades uh, overall and I remember in about 1993 when I was still at school and didn't have a lot of money to my name, a bit like these days, um, the hospital radio I was volunteering with at the time had one of these and I can't remember um, if in those days it was, it, I can't remember if it was £75 we'd paid for it or over £100, um, it was one of those. And to me, as an unwaged schoolboy, that seemed a fantastically huge amount of money. Um, 
and of course in those days 20 plus years ago a hundred pounds would buy you a lot more then than it would today in 2016 i have three of these clocks now um, all of them from car boot sales again all of them for which i paid two pounds including this one so you can get yourself a bargain if you do make sure that it's actually receiving a signal it's no good relying on one of these to, to set up your whisper light if you've had it for the last six months um, in the basement of your house where it doesn't have a cat in house chance of receiving the signal on I think it's 60 kilohertz isn't it from Anthorn uh, to control it because it will drift over time so make sure before you use one of these that it's received a signal or is receiving a signal so it will be spot on uh, the other way you can do it there are websites out there uh, the website that uh, Soda Beams recommends is time.is so time.is um, either of those would be fine but either way you do have to make sure that uh, it's exactly the right time and um, the first couple of times I had a go at setting the whisper light um, it uh, I, I had to do it two or three times because it seemed like when I pressed the button um, in the future minutes when the whisper light did the sequence of green flashes it would be ever so slightly out of sync with the clock that I'd used um, I don't seem to have had that problem more recently so I don't know if it's because my skill has got better at pressing the button at the exact split second or if the whisper light has somehow needed to, to bed in kind of so be careful of time so antenna wise then on the end of 10 meters of RG58 coax I've been using the high end fed antenna for 40, 20 and 10 meters on 20 meters obviously um, Carl 2E0 HPI sold this one to me so hello Carl if you're watching I know that Carl is either intending to buy a whisper light or owns one already um, so this is the antenna I was using for six and a half days on 20 meters end fed and the wire goes up into this ear tree and it's then um, attached to a roach pole which is held in place by the tree which you probably can't see now a couple of weekends back we had storm angus down here in the uk and one of the effects of those strong winds i'll try and zoom in on this is that the part of the antenna which was previously let's see if i can zoom in uh where is it part of the antenna that was previously attached to the very top of the pole there it is, that, that lumpy thing there, um, has blown off the top of the pole, which is up there. So the antenna is possibly not working as well as it was before the storm. Still one to one on 20 metres. So that was that one. Um, now for 30 metres, this is the antenna. On top of this fishing pole, which came for a couple of pounds from a car boot sale, my, my wife loves car boot sales and I've been to loads of them in 2016. On the top of that is a one-to-one -one ballon, which has also dropped down a little bit. I think I'll have to do something with that. Um, and that is a monoband dipole for 40 metres. Um, nowhere near a quarter of a wavelength above the ground, so works really well for near vertical incident skywave and that's tied off at the house on one end and uh, a tree on the other. Now at a car boot sale earlier in 2016, I bought a big uh, roll of wire for a couple of pounds only, and I've cut two lengths of it. Here it is, it's a, a nice green color. Two lengths of it, which I can attach. I don't know if you'll see that, but I can attach and remove to the 40 meter dipole as a kind of linked dipole to make it into um, an 80 meter dipole and I keep going on about perfecting CW so this is cut for the low end of the band 3.5 megahertz one-to-one -one resonance <clears throat> down that part of the band and uh, it works fine on 80 meters but of course if you get the calculator out 
10.1 megahertz, the 30 metre band that the whisper light will transmit on is um, roughly three half wavelengths, three half wavelengths, three wavelengths, something like that, for 80 metres. So it's resonant on about 10.5. That is close enough to be able to tune it using an antenna matching unit. So when the whisper light transmits, the needle in there barely even moves. There is a QRP setting you can switch in by taking the lid off and doing something, but I haven't done that. So I've tuned this on 30, mega, um, 30 meters uh, using a bit more RF out of the FT450 because um, the whisper light is so QRP. If I tried to tune it manually, um, using 200 milliwatts, the needles wouldn't have moved enough for me to be able to see anything. So that's the setup. Um, I transmitted on 30 metres for the first time yesterday morning, Thursday morning, and uh, here are the results. So overall then, if you think there is even the slightest chance that the whisper light is something that would appeal to you, then I'm sure you're right. I would have no hesitation about recommending one. Only slight gripe, ever so slight, is that it doesn't include a low pass filter for 40 meters. I'm saying that very selfishly as a 40 meter man. And if I was that worried about it, then all I have to do is buy one or build one. And is it Soda Beam's fault that I haven't done that? No, it's nobody's fault but mine. Personally, I would have been happy to pay a little bit more and have it fractionally bigger, the, the whisper light being physically fractionally bigger. But 30 metres and 20 metres in particular require smaller, physically smaller antennas. 20 metres in particular uh, is, well, it's the go-to long-haul DX band, isn't it? And on a mountain top, uh, which... Um, you know, SOTA, which the whisper light is, is primarily designed for, rather than continuous home use as a beacon, I think. Um, 30 and 20 metres are possibly the bands that you would be using more than 40 metres anyway, uh, if you were chasing DX. But apart from that, I genuinely cannot find anything bad to say about this device. Um, I'm surprised that nobody's manufactured one sooner. I know there is, is it the QRSS Ultimate 3? which uh, involves building on your part and is a lot more expensive. Um, I had wondered about maybe running one of those as a beacon from home, but uh, then the whisper light came along and I thought this is perfect, this is absolutely ideal. Um, it sold out a lot and very quickly. I think uh, Richard there is, um, is ma making new ones as fast as he can. Uh, greetings to you Richard if you're watching this antenna and thank uh, this this antenna this video and uh, thank you for this uh, wonderful little device that you've created. It deserves to be really 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 successful. I hope it is. I'm filming this in December 2016 so if you're watching this um, several years in the future then there may well be a whisper light version 2.0, 3.0, 4.0 out by then and I am quite sure that however this kit evolves because it's going to be popular, it's going to remain popular deservedly so however it evolves um, it is going to remain to be brilliant so really pleased, really satisfied as a customer and I cannot recommend it highly enough if you have the opportunity of buying a whisper light, if you think there is even only the slightest chance that it's something that you'd like to have, then get one without any hesitation at all. 73.